Welcome back. So in this session, we will see some more stuff regarding the Appium server running that from the code itself, like programmatically starting and stopping the server. So we have already seen in our previous session, um, few things like how we can set the builder and then how we can set different like your main.js or apm.js. And then we have seen how we can stop the server with different methods, like by killing from the command prompt and then getting the process id and then killing based on the process id so uh, uh, and we were talking in that and then we came out uh, to a conclusion that the stop method is not working like you would have seen we were using this stop right get instance dot stop this method is not working so for some reason i was thinking this is some issue with the apm but uh, it was uh, some problem with my the code setup or the way we have organized the get instance method so so we will see how we can customize the get instance method so that the stop method will work. So it's basically there is no issue from the IPM side. The IPM uh, so server is absolutely working fine with this stop method. So let's see how we can customize that. And then we will be uh, we will be seeing few more uh, stuff regarding how we can set up different server plaques by using this builder. Okay. So let's get started. So for this, what I will do, I will do a small change so it's good that we have learned different methods how we can uh, kill the server so for time being let me just comment this one okay because we will be using the as usual stop method of the IPM okay now let's see what we can change to the get instance okay so uh, let me tell you what is the reason why the stop method didn't work the thing is that if you see here we, when we are calling the get instance method right here it's basically doing everything from the beginning like it is setting up all the details with respect to the parameter and then returning that server instance okay or the apm driver local service instance it is returning now what i'm doing here in this top also i'm saying get instance so it means that it is again going back to the same method and performing all the setting up the parameters and without starting actually it is stopping the server so that's where actually the conflict was coming and then the stop method was not working now what we will do so now we need to make this get instance as a singleton pattern so it means that if once the uh, apm this particular what is that so apm driver local service if once it is set in your code then second time do not set it so some kind of like uh, if object equal to equal to null then only do a get instance if not then continue with that server instance only okay so with minimal changes i will try myself to do this one so that it won't be a complicated scenario for you guys so instead of declaring this server what i will do i will keep it here that's the first thing i need to do and because all the methods are static let's make this variable as static as well okay so now here what i will do in the get instance I will not make this as get instance actually let's make it as set instance for now okay and then here let's make it as void okay and here I will create another class static and then here what I will do I will make this particular apm lo driver local service as a return type and here i will make this one is get instance method okay so for now let's hold it up to this particular uh, blank and then here what i will do the rest uh, things are remaining same but here another thing i will change is that so set instance means i will just keep it up to this one only server equal to apm driver local service dot build service let's keep that up to that now here because we are setting it i will not return this one because there is no return type right see that error goes and here what i will do i'll keep this one we can write if server that is the global server equal to equal to null when it is null then only you set that instance that's it and then what you will do whatever these parameters are there like if you are setting it okay if any other parameters also or any other methods you want to call with respect to this server you can just go on increasing that here inside this because if server is null then only 
set that instance and then configure all the server related methods here and then once it is uh, configured i mean it is set already then you return it now what will happen and here it will remain as it is only because just think about this one let's say get instance for the first time what it will do i mean port is definitely this will remain same only each port available whatever we have seen that will remain as it is we are not going to change anything actually so let's first see this one get instance dot start it's a fresh right so what will happen this server is null always now this get instance will go to let me command b so this will go to here server equal to equal to null yes for this first time it will be null then you set that instance okay now setting that instance means server is getting some value actually then you do clear output stream or whatever the methods are there you can just continue doing that and then return that server so whatever that server is there you return it and wherever you want to use that's nothing but here it is returning so this is my server instance dot start okay now let's say that you have executed all of your test first you are making this start in the test engine listener or in the before class whatever you want and then you are calling your stop method okay with this one now what will happen here let's call again this get instance method now what will happen see because we already started it my server is having some value right okay so now this time what it will do this server I mean this get instance method will not again call this set instance because this condition is becoming false so while you are coming into this top method the server is already having some value and that will not fall under this and it will not call the set instance it will just return that server and then here what I am doing I am stopping it okay here even I can write one more step also like if server is not equal to null because then only i need to start i need to stop right else i don't need to do that so here what i will do it is exactly the reverse of that if the server is null then you do all this process if the server is not null then only stop it because if the server is already null what is the reason i need to uh, do i mean i need to stop that server there is no need right and then here is out and here you can say apm server stopped something okay now here you can mention that's it there is not much uh, changes you need okay now let's see if this is really working or not okay what i will do first yeah this everything remains as it is we need not to change anything let's try one good one thing let me run the apm server so that it will not change that I mean it will not run from the code okay my server is running let me run this okay so it's saying server already running it means that it is not starting from the uh, what do you call from the code and it is not even stopping also because we are not handling from the code so there is no need of making the stop from the uh, code itself right now let's do one thing let's control c so that the ipm server stopped running from outside okay and there is no logs yet because we didn't start it yet now let's run it okay server started from here it means that from the code and then it waited for some time uh, because i've given some wait and then it stopped the server okay now let's see the apm logs and if you see apm logs are creating and i'm not uh, printing anything to the console that is the magic of this particular method clear output stream we are using right we have already discussed that one now i while i was doing uh, this uh, code change i observed that the date format the date and time whatever it is showing here is not the date and time that what i am into the time zone so the time zone of this time stamp is different than the time zone where i met okay so i was just thinking how do we change this one okay so that's where actually i got to know that there is some server logs are present okay or the server arguments are there which we can use and then change few of the 
stuff actually while running the APM server for that APM provided few of the server arguments let me show you that and I will give you few of the usage of that also so APM server arguments this is from the APM site itself you can see there are a lot of server arguments are there in one of that is the time zone okay so if you go here you will see the local time zone and here it is telling it is becoming false so by default it is false use local time zone for timestamps if you want to print with your current time zone then you print it and this is very much important because let's see let's say that you are running from Jenkins and it will give you a different timestamp but while you are seeing into your uh, I mean into your machine it will be different so that you will get three time zones your own time zone Jenkins time zone and then IPM will is taking its own time zone actually so that's where the problem will come you need to stick to one time zone only so that's where it is better to keep the Jenkins or the machine where the IPM server is running that's important so I would say that make it simplifier and then keep it as a local time zone is true okay so now the question comes how do we set it and what are these uh, server arguments we didn't talk yet right we spoke actually but we didn't come to this particular uh, server arguments in our previous session so let me just uh, go through that so if you see the first argument uh, it says address okay now this address is basically whatever that address we are specifying the IP address where the IPM server should listen to and the port that is by default it is port 723 and we have seen how we can set it also right from our uh, code itself like with using port then with using any port leave it with IP address using port these two are nothing but the server logs here oh, sorry the server arguments address and port okay so we have these methods right here anyway the methods are used uh, available now let's see if we have some methods where I can use some kind of uh, what do you call time zone setting okay now so far I have checked I'm not seeing any time zone related okay if you see there is no time zone but there is one method that is with argument so if you see here with argument in that you need to give one server argument and then some value so this server argument is nothing but these arguments okay so if any available methods are there you can use that as it is if there are few methods which is not yet implemented by java client because see this is not specific to java client these are specific to java client library and in c you might be getting some other uh, libraries you here you can see java client specific now some libraries uh, some language binding libraries they have made okay for easier access we will do some uh, methods available for the users some are saying we can give with argument and then let the user decide actually what they want to set it okay it's good right I mean if you have methods you can utilize it else still you have some F option actually now let's use this with argument so there are if you see there are two are there Oops, let me go back again with argument so one is server arg argument this is singular it's only one parameter where actually you have true false scenarios you can use just that argument itself only if you mention that argument it means that we want to set that as true if something like a combination of key value pair like for an instance let's say that you want to use the base path okay to WD hub or something this is not uh, a kind of a boolean right like uh, like this uh, like this one session override true or false so if you are not specifying any argument then it means that it is false by default if you want to specify let's say that you want to specify session override is true then you have to use this second one session override so you can just mention and here you can just mention session override I, we will see how we can mention that but if it is key value pair then you need to put key in a double quote and then value in a double quote that's how it is argument comma value 
okay now let's see uh, this time zone setting so if you see like as we have seen right this local time zone is there so i can't just copy paste it because this is related to the command line arguments actually so i can't use it here so for that to access those server arguments we have something called as general server logs so general server flag sorry general ser server flag you can see that is coming from local flags if i use that and then put dot you will see all the arguments those are available in that apm docs so you will see something called as local time stamp time zone okay here you can see now this is a boolean actually either i need to if i'm not mentioning this one it means that it is false if i want to have a local time zone it means that it is true so i should not mention like this true okay this will not work actually it will fail okay like there is one more actually like let's say that you want to with argument and then like let's say that if you want to specify a specific uh, log labels actually okay like there are http apm debug and then uh, you have uh, like info and all those things if you want to do something specific you will get something as log labels okay you can mention that here and you can just mention one or http related whatever that labels you want you can just mention here so this is like a key value pair and this is like if uh, you will see a lot of uh, arguments are there where the value is true false if you want to set it false then don't mention in here don't mention in the code if you want to make anything true just mention that argument here only that's it you need not to do anything so let me again run this code okay so all set it executed and then so stopped the server successfully now let's open it you can see the time zone that is 21 3 so this is current time zone actually currently the time is that so that's how actually you can set the time zone the same thing depending on other requirements you can just use that general server flag okay now before uh, we will finish this session let me just tell you how we can use this server logs actually because this is actually with respect to your binding whether you are using java or dot net or uh, javascript you can use the way you want coding wise now if i want to set it so in our previous session we have uh, seen already we can even set these arguments in our command line also like i can say apm and i can say port hyphen p and then i can set it as 4735 let's say okay i can set it like this so uh, here you can see 4735 now how do i know that I, hyphen p is uh, the command actually so that is nothing but you can see here at the beginning that is there okay here you can see either i can use hyphen p or hyphen hyphen port the same thing okay so anything that you want you can just mention in this so you can mention apm and after that whatever the i mean xyz whatever that um, key value pair you want to mention you can mention that the same thing if you want to mention you can mention address that is uh, double and then you can say that uh, i mean whatever port actually i don't have any ip address let's give it a try if it is working okay so it is telling because uh, the requested address is not available but yeah that's how actually you will be using those address and then port and then anything i mean even even you can set it up this uh, i mean what you call chrome driver port chrome driver executable all these things i mean path you can mention and these are the default values actually if i'm not giving anything this will be your default value so they have provided a good documentation of each uh, what you call argument with the default value and what is the purpose of that particular argument so it's good to refer uh, this uh, particular uh, link from ipm itself only i will provide this uh, link into the description below so you can do different practices on this okay 
and then uh, at the end I think we didn't see this one I mean we have seen this one but what you can do you can just uh, as usual use the start and stop server on test start you can just use this start server and then based on your test result on test success failure or skipped you can call those in the tear down itself you can just call that so because we are quitting the driver right along with that you can just call that IPM server apm server dot stop you can do that as well so that you need not to even change anything uh, through in your code actually because anyway we are calling this tear down method uh, in our all of these right and why i am mentioning this one we have already seen in our previous session in the test listener test ng listener actually how to use with ipm but i can reiterate that real quick so because these are actually uh, different conditions and that will appear each one once only like either success or failure or skipped like you can't get success and failure together right for a particular uh, test and i don't know uh, i mean that test will fall under any one of these which one of these methods so that's why everywhere i'm mentioning this one so if a test is failing i want to tear down if a test is passing still i want to do it uh, tear down even you can use this on start and on finish as well like let's say that you want to continue your appium server starting from your test and then till end of your test you don't want to turn it on at every test level actually you can do that as well okay so that's about it about the appium server stay tuned for some more topics and do subscribe to our youtube channel if you haven't thank you for watching